Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about acid-base titrations and then a variation on a titration problem where you can solve for the molecular mass of the acid. Okay, so what is a titration? A titration is a chemical reaction that occurs in solution where you carefully add one solution to the other until your chemical reaction is just complete. And so for this to be useful, you need to know the concentration of one of your solutions very accurately. And then you do this to find the concentration of the other solution, which then you can use to answer whatever question you may have. And so you want this reaction to just reach the point at which it's finished. And so the point at which it's finished is called the equivalence point, where the reaction is complete and you need some way to determine when your equivalence point happens. If you've got one clear liquid and another clear liquid, or even if they're not clear, how do you know the reaction's done? So for an acid-base reaction, which is our generally more commonly used titration, you add a molecule called an indicator that changes color at or near the equivalence point. And so the picture here represents this process. You have some unknown down here, say, in your flask, and then in your burette up here, you have another compound of an accurately known concentration. And so then you slowly and carefully add the solution from the burette into the flask down below until you reach the equivalence point. And in this case, the equivalence point comes about when the solution turns pink, because there's an indicator in here that turns pink once you hit the equivalence point of this acid-base titration. So chemists use titrations for all sorts of things that center around figuring out amounts of something or concentrations of some liquid, and we have applications of this in the laboratory, things like that. So some more specific examples. You can use titrations for an acid-base reaction. So in this one, I have sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. And if you have sodium hydroxide where you know the concentration of it, which typically requires a separate experiment that you do first to figure out what the concentration of your sodium hydroxide is. And then once you know that, you can then use it to find an unknown concentration of, say, sulfuric acid. And so at your equivalence point of this balanced equation, you've added two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of sulfuric acid. And you can use solution stoichiometry to figure out just how much sulfuric acid you have in you know, terms of concentration. You can also do this with a redox reaction. Again, here's some reaction that has an endpoint. And so many of these redox reactions with transition metals will change color when you've reached the endpoint by themselves without an indicator. So if you look carefully at this picture over here, there's something purple up in the burette but then the solution is yellow before it's reached the equivalence point, and then it turns purple once it's gotten there. And so that's the concept. So basically this is just an application of solution stoichiometry that we do a lot in the lab. So here's an example. What volume of 1.4 molar sodium hydroxide is required to titrate 25 milliliters of a 4.5 molar sulfuric acid solution? This is a good intro problem to think about titrations. It's not so applicable to what we would actually do, but if you understand this, then you can understand the ones that we actually do. So what's your first step? You gotta figure out what equation you're working with. And this is the same equation that we talked about on the last slide, two sodium hydroxides for every one sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. So your plan is that you're gonna take the volume of the acid and the molarity of it that you know. And so in this case, that's the sulfuric acid because this is the one that you have both a volume and a concentration pair for. So you know the amount of that. With the concentration and the volume, you can figure out moles of sulfuric acid. And then from there, you use the mole ratio to get moles of sodium hydroxide so there's moles of sodium hydroxide, then using the known molarity of this sodium hydroxide, you can find what volume you added. So let's see how this works. So here's your volume of acid, 25 milliliters, and then you'll need to convert that to liters, and so this problem does that thusly. Instead of saying 4.5 moles per one liter, it says 4.5 moles for 1,000 milliliters, using the fact that one liter, which you would normally see written in this spot, is equal to a thousand milliliters. 
So it's kind of a shortcut way of also converting milliliters to liters when you do this equation. If this confuses you, just do it in a separate step, no problem. All right, then you use the molarity of the acid with the volume of the acid to get moles. So at this point, you now know moles of sulfuric acid. Then you use the mole ratio in the equation, two moles of sodium hydroxide for every mole of sulfuric acid. And then you need to use the molarity again to convert this back to liters. And then this uses the shortcut method again to convert this back to milliliters by using moles per thousand milliliters, which is the same as saying moles per liters, but it just gives you units of milliliters instead. Now it's good to double check that our units cancel out, milliliters cancel out, moles of sulfuric acid cancel out, moles of sodium hydroxide cancel out, we're set here. And we're left with milliliters of solution, and this is 158 milliliters. So this now answers our question. What volume of this solution is required to titrate 25 mils of the sulfuric acid? 158 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. All right, let's show another example. And this is an example of how we standardize the, so the sodium hydroxide, or in this case, potassium hydroxide solutions. I said that a couple slides ago, that you have to do an experiment first to figure out what the concentration of your base solution is. And then once you do that, you can go and do whatever chemistry you need to do. So for this, we typically use potassium hydrogen phthalate, which is KHP, and we'll do this in our lab on this subject. The reason KHP is used is because it doesn't absorb water very well, which is good, because when you weigh it out, you know that you're weighing out just KHP, and it's a solid, so you can weigh it easily, and you know that it hasn't absorbed a bunch of water. So then that's good, because you can trust that you're weighing out the right number of moles. This is a... Come on, Sadie, don't bark when I'm taking... Really, Sadie? Really? At this point in the video, my wife came home, and the, my dog, Sadie, decided that she was going to make all kinds of noise. Typical. Okay, so we have our KHP, which you can weigh that out, and you know the molar mass of it. And KHP is a monoprotic acid, which means that for one mole of KHP, you release one hydrogen ion. And so the stoichiometric coefficient is going to be 1 to 1 between KHP and KOH. So here's the written out reaction between KHP, which is this big crazy molecule right here. You can look it up if you're curious, and potassium hydroxide. And so this hydrogen right here is the one that's acidic. So that's the one that comes off, and then the potassium from the KOH comes onto this, and we're left with K2 for our potassium phthalate. And then this makes water, which these acid-base reactions tend to do. Okay, but moral of the story here is we've got a one-to-one -one ratio between the acid we're using and the base we're using. Okay, so we know the volume of the potassium hydroxide solution, and we want to calculate what the molarity of it is. So we know the volume of the solution in liters that's given, so we need to find the moles of potassium hydroxide that react, that are in this volume of solution, to be able to figure out the molarity. So that's our goal. We're going to find moles of potassium hydroxide. So this text you're seeing came from a textbook answer manual, so it has some description here, which I think is helpful, actually. So, all right, so our goal is to find the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. So... We start with what we know. We know that we have 4.218 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate, and then we're given the molar mass of this. It's not just potassium plus hydrogen plus phosphorus. It is a whole big organic molecule. All right, so we have the molar mass of this. So if you use the molar mass like this, you get moles of potassium hydrogen phthalate. Now here's the mole ratio that we talked about. It's one to one between the acid, KHP, and the base, KOH. Now, when you do this all together, you get moles of potassium hydroxide that must be in your solution. Because it took this much KHP, that means you must have had this much KOH in your solution in the first place. So that's the piece we need. We have the moles of potassium hydroxide, now we want to find molarity. Well, molarity is moles over liters, so we just solve for moles, so this number goes down here, and then we need the liters of the solution. Well, 18.68 milliliters is 18.68 times 10 to the negative 3 liters. That's not proper scientific notation, but it's kind of a shortcut way of showing how to convert from milliliters to liters. Again, if that messes with you, 
then just do the math and you'll come up with 0.01868 liters and just use that number instead. Totally fine. Okay, so you have moles over liters and you get molarity. So this answered our question. We want to know what this concentration of the solution is. And here it is. It's 0.1106 molar. Now this is a good real world example because the potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, they're very hydroscopic or hygroscopic. And that means they absorb a bunch of water from the atmosphere. So when you weigh out sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, you're also weighing out an unknown amount of water. So you can't just weigh it out and make a solution because you can't trust that concentration very well. So you have to do this step to standardize the potassium hydroxide, which means to accurately determine the molarity of it. And then you can use that in the future steps. And this is exactly what you do in the first week of the water lab in Chem 9. Okay, so now the second content here is the same type of problem, but going the other way around. You have an acid, you know it's monoprotic, but you don't know what it is. But you can weigh it, and assuming that this acid doesn't absorb a bunch of water, if you weigh it out, 0.5849, and then dissolve it in water to make some volume, now that solution is then neutralized with 28 some odd milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide would have to be standardized separately in order to do this experiment in reality. But say that's already been done, we have a concentration of it, let's find the molar mass of the acid. So our target here is molar mass, so that means we need to find grams per mole. Well, the number of grams is given in the problem, 0.5849 grams. But the number of moles is unknown. And that's what we need to find. But we do know that we have 28.64 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And since it's a monoprotic acid, that means that the mole ratio between a monoprotic acid and sodium hydroxide, which has one hydroxide per formula unit, the mole ratio here is one to one. Now, what do we do next? When in doubt, start with the pair that you know both the molarity and the volume of. And so in this case, that's the sodium hydroxide. And so if we combine molarity and volume, we can get moles of sodium hydroxide. And so, all right, here's the volume of the sodium hydroxide. Now, since we're going to be interfacing with molarity, which is moles per liter, we need to have the volume in liters. And so here's how you convert the volume to liters in the method that I typically show it in my class, but do keep in mind there's lots of different ways to do this. And then you have the concentration of this, which tells you how many moles are in one liter of sodium hydroxide. And then we have our mole ratio. So one mole of acid is one mole of sodium hydroxide. Great. You apply the mole ratio this way. And then you get an answer of how many moles of acid you have in this particular sample. And then you have three sig figs because you're limited by the three sig figs on the concentration. Okay, so we want molar mass, which is grams per mole. Now we have the number of grams already in this sample. And then we just found the number of moles in this sample by titration. So you do this division and you get 204 grams per mole. And that's your answer. And 204 grams per mole happens to be the molar mass of potassium hydrogen phthalate. And here's the structure drawn in a bond line diagram. And there you go, that's your answer. So that's the examples we have for now to talk about titrations. So keep in mind the big key for titrations is that at the equivalence point, you have the stoichiometric relationship based on the equation. So I wrote on here, moles of acid relates to moles of base. And so what that means is at the equivalence point, you can use one mole of HCl is related to one mole of sodium hydroxide as the key to the center of your stoichiometry. Now it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio. It often is, but it's not always. We had some examples earlier where this was a two-to-one ratio, for instance. But that's the key to unlocking these problems is you have a known, you have an unknown, and then in the middle of your mathematics, you have the mole ratio that's only true at the equivalence point where you've added equal amounts based on this mole ratio.
So that's the key to unlocking a titration problem. And with that, I bid you good luck and end the video. Thanks for watching.